Good day everyone. Please subscribe, like and share these videos as widely as possible to help my channel grow. We continue with our reading today and we'll read from Genesis 25 in the King James 1611 Bible. Then again Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah, and she bare him Zimran and Yokshan and Midan and Midian and Ishbak and Shuach. As one reads all these names, it is interesting to see what happened to these people, like Midian for example. The descendants of Midian naturally were the Midianites and we encounter them in many places throughout the Bible. Genesis 37 verse 28 Then they passed by Midianite merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Now the Midianites settled on the right hand side of the Red Sea, or what is today called the Gulf of Aqaba. Mount Sinai is also in this area, and not on the Sinai Peninsula, as it is mapped today. Some Phoenician princes back when was traveling there one day and said, Oh, look, the mountain looks like Mount Sinai. Of course, everyone said, Yes, ma'am, okay, ma'am, and the mountain on the end of the Sinai Peninsula has been called Mount Sinai ever since. But this is not where the biblical Mount Sinai are. I'll show you. Exodus 2 verse 15. Now, when Pharaoh heard, that, heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. Hmm. So after he murdered an Egyptian, Moses ran all the way from Egypt to the land of Midian to hide from Pharaoh. And so later when Moses led the people out of Egypt, they went to Midian, to the mountain of God, Mount Sinai and they had to cross the Red Sea to get there. When we get to that part of the Bible, I will show you more on the exact place where the Israelites crossed, and so on. Now the Midianites, later, was not of the same religion as the Israelites, and as can be seen in uh, Numbers 22 verse 7. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand, and they came to Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. Remember this story where Balaam's jackass spoke to him and so on? They became enemies with Israel when they tried to enter the promised land. Numbers 31 verse 3 and verse 7 to 8. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto the war, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge the Lord of Midian. And they warred against the Midianites, and the Lord commanded Moses, and they slew all the males, and they slew the kings of Midian. Judges 6 verse 1 And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. So the Midianites ended up being perpetual enemies with the Israelites, and they were actually cousins. Judges 7 verse 7, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred that men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. But let's get back to Genesis 25, and we see more names of children by this third wife of Abraham. And Yokshan begat Sheba and Dedan, and the sons of Dedan were Ashurim and Letushim and Lumim. And the sons of Midian, Epah and Epher and Hanoch and Abida and Eldah. All these were the children of Keturah. So all these peoples settled in what is today called the Saudi Arabian Peninsula and are all, of course, intermarried and intermingled today. But you can still find the Midianites on the right hand side of the Red Sea today. It just spelled a bit different. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac, but unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son, while he yet lived eastward unto east, the east country. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived. A hundred and three score and fifteen years. 
So Abraham was 175 years old when he died. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years and was gathered to his people. And his sons, Isaac and Ishmael, buried him in the cave of Machpelah. Remember the cave he bought to bury Sarah in? In the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar, the Hittite, which is before Mamre. The field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Heth. There was Abraham buried and Sarah his wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelt by the well Lehi Roy. Remember this well from Genesis 16, Lehi Roy, meaning the well of the one who lives and sees. Now these are the generations of is a phrase that appears ten times in the book of Genesis. As I explained in the previous video, this happens when a new author takes over. I believe Adam wrote the first part of Genesis, and then his sons took over, and so on. Moses also wrote a part, and then he simply collected all the parts and put them together. Verse 12. Now these are the generations of Ishmael Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian Sarah's handmaid bare unto Abraham. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael, by their names according to their generations, the firstborn of Ishmael, Nebaioth, and Kedar, and Abdil, and Mipsam, and Mishma, and Duma, and Masa, Hadar, and Tema, Yetur, Nafish, and Kedema. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names by their towns, and, they, and by their castles. Twelve princes according to their nations. And these are the years of the life of Ishmael, and hundred and thirty and seven years, and he gave up the ghost and died, and was gathered unto his people. And they dwelt from Havilah to Shur, that is before Egypt, as thou goest towards Assyria. And he died in the, in the presence of all his brethren. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac. Now Isaac is the author, so the piece that Ishmael wrote is actually rather short. And Isaac was forty years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister to Laban the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And, the, and she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she buried them. It is interesting to note that if you do the math, you find that Abraham is 160 years old when these twins are born. Remember that God promised Abraham that his offspring would be as numerous as the stars and the grains of sand and so on? Well, he was 160 when his two grandsons were born. Sometimes we have to wait for God to fulfill his promises. All you have to do is to be patient. Something I have to consistently remind myself of as well. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Isn't it sad when parents have favorites or if they love their children because of what they can get from them? 
and Jacob sod pottage. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Esau was called Edom, and again we see how the Edomites later became great enemies of Israel as well. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. In Hebrew culture, the firstborn receives a double portion when time comes to inherit from dad. This is what is meant by birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? I'm pretty sure that Esau was exaggerating when he said that he was about to die. He was only been out hunting for the day. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he sware unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. So because Esau was hungry, he sold his birthright for some soup. He was led by the flesh and not the spirit. He thought so little of his birthright that he did not mind selling it for instant gratification, in this case, to still his hunger. How many times do we not also forsake something that God puts right in front of us? How many times do we have an opportunity put right in front of us, but we choose to walk the other way? How many marriages are broken up because of stupid and silly things? They just break up and walk away from it instead of working at the problem and staying together. Esau sold his and his offspring's future for a bowl of soup. What has God given you? Or what has God called you to do? And are you doing it? Or are you also selling out too cheap? What would it take to get you to quit your bad habits and follow God's plan for you? What would it take? Unfortunately, this is all we have time for today. Please like, subscribe and even comment on these videos. Share it as widely as possible and it will really help my channel to grow. Don't forget to leave a donation. Instructions on how to do so will follow. God bless. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified of our next video. You can help us create better videos by leaving a donation on Patreon. The link is in the description. Thank you. We hope to see you next time.